Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Biology and Module 2, Organisation of Living Things. This is our final video, number 25 in this series from Module 2. This final one is called Changes in Transport Media and our student learning outcome is that you can compare the changes in the composition of the transport medium as it moves around an organism. So in order for us to think about changes in the transport media, we need to think about A, what the media is and also what organism we're looking at. So if we think about humans, then the transport media is blood. So that is the medium through which the materials that we need are being transported around. So one of the things that we can do is have a look at what are the general types of substances that we might find in there. And we'll leave aside things like the red blood cells and the white blood cells. Those are the sorts of things which can also change from time to time. Sometimes in response to disease, there are always going to be components of each of these in the blood and they may change a little bit from time to time. Some of the other substances that we find in the blood, however, are going to be changing throughout the course of the day. A very large portion of the plasma is water, but what else is in there can differ depending on, for example, when was the last time we ate, what sort of things we have in our diet, and so on. So what we wanna try and do is get a little bit of a look at how the composition of the blood changes as it moves through different organs. So one of the best ways to do this is to think about some key organs and then what's happening in those organs and how that might influence some of the components of the blood. So there's a couple of things that are very important in terms of blood composition. So the fluid itself is water. We need water. We do find changes in blood pressure are related to blood volumes. So if I'm a little bit dehydrated, for example, that's going to drop my blood volume down a little bit. And so there is an organ, the kidneys are going to be responsible for regulating water. Kidneys are going to be responsible for regulating water balance or osmoregulation. And so they're going to be either withdrawing more water or less water based on how much I have in my blood at a given time. And that's going to be under hormonal control. Obviously, there's going to be places in the body where the Oxygen is going to change. It's going to increase as it passes, as capillaries pass by the alveoli and oxygen diffuses into the blood. It's also going to be lower as capillaries exchange that oxygen uh, with, say, muscle cells that are taking that oxygen in. There can be differences in the amount of ions, the salts in particular. There's also a number of cells that, that use sodium and potassium, for example, as part of the nervous system response. We also know that things like calcium can be stored in things like bones and teeth. And we also know that that's also going to be something that's going to be under hormonal control. When I've recently eaten, then I'm going to, in, through my digestive system, I'm going to release some of the products of the food that I've eaten, which might be sugars, which might be amino acids, and they'll be absorbed through the microvilli in the small intestine. They'll pass into my blood system. So again, that will change the nature of the blood composition. And also, some of the cellular processes that are going on are going to release some waste products primarily carbon dioxide, but also nitrogen wastes. And those also have to be removed from the body so they don't build up and poison the body. In addition, because I don't eat all day long, I tend to eat large amounts less often. I'm going to have spikes in my glucose, blood glucose levels and then times where it's very low. So my body has to be able to regulate those glucose levels to increase or decrease them by either storing excess glucose in the liver or in fat cells, or releasing some of the stored glucose if my blood sugar levels fall. So you can see there's quite a list of things that the body is doing, and that's not to talk about things like uh, certain drugs which I might put into my body. If I like my morning coffee, for example, that caffeine is going to be processed through my liver, and again, that could 
change the composition of the blood. So your final table, final comparison table to have a little bit of a look at. And I suggest you pick a few of these organs out. It doesn't have to be a lot of them, but it's probably worth looking at some of the key ones. So if I'm looking at lungs as a starting point, well, one of the main changes that we're going to see in the oxygen, in the blood composition is an increase in oxygen as the blood passes through the lungs and a decrease in carbon dioxide. Muscle tissue is going to work in the opposite direction primarily. So we're going to drop the concentration of oxygen as that oxygen is diffused into the muscle cells. We're also going to find an increase in carbon dioxide as those muscle cells have been carrying out aerobic respiration and therefore are going to have a lot of carbon dioxide that needs to be removed. Some of the cellular processes in muscle cells are going to generate some nitrogenous wastes and hence they're also going to move into the blood and increase the concentration and perhaps we might also be extracting glucose and possibly some amino acids from the blood into the muscle cells where they might be needed again for things like aerobic respiration or also for protein synthesis. Our brain is a very important organ. It's the coordination system for most of the body processes. It has a high concentration of nerve cells and it requires a high respiration rate because it requires lots of energy. So it's gonna do some of the same things that we saw for the muscle cells, particularly it's gonna take oxygen and glucose out of the blood and it's going to add carbon dioxide back into the blood. And then finally, kidneys, and we'll look at kidneys in a lot more detail in the HSC course, but that's where we have a lot of filtration happening. We've got uh, urea, which is some of the nitrogen waste products in a form that can be expelled by the body. We've also got salt and water being regulated, a couple of hormones, antidiuretic hormone and aldosterone, which are two hormones that are associated with regulating the amounts of water and salt that are passing through the kidneys, either stimulating reabsorption or not, so that more or less of either of those types of substances continue on to the bladder and then can be expelled from the body later on. So when you're going through your list of changes in the transport media, it's best to try and contextualize that with one or more of these very important organs in your body and to think about how, as the blood passes through those organs, its composition is likely to change. Thanks for watching.